Um, very warm welcome to to London and the conference. Um, and it's, it is a great, great pleasure to be here. I appreciate it's a very international audience, but it is very important to realise there's three things which really typify England. And I noticed that when you come back, beautiful weather um, regularly like this. Um, tubes and undergrounds that don't work. Uh, most of the participants, I think, are stuck some, somewhere on the Jubilee line. Is that true? And Lord's Cricket Ground. I was last here 36 years ago um, as a trial for uh, England under-16s cricket team, which I didn't get into. Um, one of the great disappointments of my life. And if I had done, I probably wouldn't be here now. Um, I'd be on that wall. But anyway, you can't, re you can't regret what you didn't do. So it's great personal interest as well, neglected tropical disease, as you heard in that very um, kind introduction. Uh, and it's a personal interest, and of course what the director of the Wellcome Trust wants is not necessarily translated into Wellcome Trust interests and policy, but I think you can be assured that the Wellcome Trust's interest in global health, neglected tropical diseases and infectious diseases are unlikely to go down over the next period of time that I'm at the Trust. It would be unthinkable, I think, to have bothered appointing me if that was not going to be their interests. And, and clearly this society and others like it absolutely crucial to delivering on what is still a really, really important agenda. I appreciate that there is a lot of discussion and there are certainly absolute truths in it that the world is changing and the non-communicable diseases are undoubtedly becoming more important. It's true in Kenya, it's true in Vietnam, it's true in most countries around the world. But there is, and there always will be, in my view, and a, main, a, a remaining agenda around infectious diseases, and particularly some of the ones that you're going to be discussing today. And we must not neglect that, because if we don't, the, they will either come back to haunt us, they will continue to uh, uh, push their pressure onto communities and individuals and families uh, around the world. And it's absolutely crucial that if we can, that unfinished business is finished. And in that light, it's very uh, encouraging to see so many people obviously many old friends here, um, but also people increasingly, I think, from uh, obviously academia, but also from industry. And the links between academia, industry, policy makers, uh, and people, absolutely critical to, I think, to making sure that we all make the progress uh, that we want to see in this, this area. And the discussions going on today about drug discovery and development and pushing it through into implementation and practice are absolutely crucial to that. And the reason I can't actually stay today for the whole day is because I'm going later today to a meeting of the Equator Group who are looking at the ways that we can make the pathway through to clinical trials and implementation of the things discovered by many of the people in this room to make that more efficient. Because in this particular space, in fact, in the whole of clinical research, but in this particular area, I think we have to work hard to continue to make sure the way we translate what we discover is made as easy as possible. If we don't, we will not be able to afford to do what we wish to do. Uh, no matter which bits of industry are involved with us, no matter which bits of government or which bits of philanthropy, if we don't make and turn, roll back the, I believe, somewhat ridiculous uh, regulation and processes around clinical research and implementation of that research into practice, then we won't see the discoveries that are crucial. Uh, and we won't have the funding that will allow us to do that. An approach to that also, which many of you in this room from academia and industry are embracing, and we would at the Wellcome Trust certainly like to see expanded, is areas around pre-competitive open source uh, uh, issues around discovery programs, whether that's in the Dundee or whether it's in Trascantos in, in Spain or whether it's in the Cambridge cluster and including the Wellcome Trust uh, Sanger Institute and EBI, we are very much in favour of that and I think that is going to be the only model by which we can actually do that and it's wonderful to see people from Dundee here who I think in some ways have pioneered that approach. It's also great to see so many Wellcome Trust uh, people in the room from the Dundee Group, uh, from Diamond, from Wellcome Trust Sanger, um, and from around the UK and internationally. Uh, the Trust has played an international role, I think, ahead of its time, and it will increase that interest. Uh, we will have in the future an annual meeting between the Trust and the World Health Organization to try and make sure that the WHO and the Wellcome Trust understand each other uh, and understand what we each can and cannot do. Uh, and where there are areas of common interest, whether it be in uh, technical assistance or in development or in implementation, we will try and be a, a very active partner in that. And I hope that will help uh, everybody in this room who is involved in that space. Equally, uh, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where the 
trust relationship with the Gates Foundation has over time been challenging for both partners, I think, and we will seek to make sure that those relationships improve. Again, to make sure that those big organisations are behind the sorts of things that everybody in this room is trying to achieve. Uh, and any ideas about how we may uh, push that agenda further, we would be very interested in hearing from you. I have major concerns that pharma is getting less interested in uh, particularly antimicrobial agents um, and in the era of coming drug resistance this is going to be a huge issue. It is one of the biggest arguments for the development of vaccines and vaccines are absolutely critical but if we don't do something to address the development of antimicrobial resistance it will have huge implications for health globally and it will have implications for the neglected tropical diseases. Many of them are incredibly vulnerable either because there's no drugs the drugs that we use are horrible and toxic or not very widely available or there's antimicrobial resistance to come and many of those diseases only have one drug available uh, and if resistance were to develop in that it would be a calamity uh, for those diseases. The public-private partnership I think is an absolute model of how to do things but we have to be critically f a critical friend of it and where it works we must learn the lessons of where it's worked and, and why it's worked and use that more broadly and again if the Wellcome Trust can play any role in that we'd be very delighted to speak to people about how that may work. Certainly I think there are excellent examples of it and, and there's representatives here from for instance uh, Medicines for Malaria Venture which I think has been a very positive force for good in the development of, of new medicines for malaria. It is great to see dengue represented here and the development of dengue vaccines will be a pivotal moment in 2014 for the world of dengue, one of the world's great increasing diseases uh, and diseases that are affecting increasingly not just Southeast Asia and sub, uh, Latin America but also increasingly Sub-Saharan Africa and that will have major implications and I'm very interested to stay and listen to the update uh, although I will hear all the real data when it comes out uh, with the WHO committee which I'll continue to chair for another few years. So thank you very much for the time to um, introduce the day. I wish you every success for the meeting. I look forward to seeing many of you in the Wellcome Trust in the months and years ahead. And if the Wellcome Trust can play a role in this space, we would like to. The door to the Trust is always open. The coffee is good. 99.9% of, .9 of people in the Wellcome Trust are actually quite nice. Uh, <laughs> you can come in and see us and discuss what you wish to do or your ideas. And we are open for any good ideas in any field, and our funding mechanisms should and do reflect that. Thank you very much.